His Royal Highness Her Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Qadaybiya Palace a number of royal family members, officials, intellectuals, journalists and businessmen, as well as a number of citizens. His Royal Highness hailed the important role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in maintaining regional and international security and stability and its efforts in defending the Arab and Islamic issues. He also stated that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, supports all the efforts of Saudi Arabia in serving Arabs and Muslims and enhancing global peace and stability. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Gulf Corporation Council countries focus their efforts in developing and improving their countries and in devoting all their energies to serve their people. He also added that the GCC countries hadn't only combated the dangers that threatened them but also those threatening other Arab and Islamic countries believing in common destiny. The Prime Minister confirmed that His Majesty always aims to develop the Kingdom of Bahrain to solidify their, its relations with other countries and to raise its status regionally and internationally and that succeeded in improving the Kingdom's reputation and position. His Royal Highness also praised the global dialogue forums and conferences that enhance cooperation between countries. His Royal Highness reviewed a number of topics relating to regional and international developments, expressing regret about the destruction in some Arab countries caused by tensions and conflicts.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Qutaybiya Palace today the Thai Ambassador to Bahrain, Chayapan. His Royal Highness lauded the positive outcomes of the official talks held between the Bahraini delegation headed by the Prime Minister and the Thai delegation headed by his counterpart. He also praised the outcomes that resulted from the Asian Cooperation Dialogue, which enhances ties between GCC countries and Thailand. The Thai Ambassador highlighted that His Royal Highness's recent visit is considered a historic one due to his initiative to strengthen the Asian relations. His Royal Highness highlighted a number of topics regarding the bilateral cooperation as well as the importance of carefully executing agreements that would benefit the two countries and their people. His Royal Highness also cited the role of the late monarch of Thailand, His Majesty King Bambilo Adliyej, and the pivotal role he played as a national symbol of preserving the country's unity, stability and development. The Thai ambassador expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness's condolences, which reflect the strong ties between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa has received today at the Gdabia Palace the former Prime Minister of Burkina Faso, member of the jury for the Age of the ISA Award for Humanitarian Service, Yusuf Wadrago. His Royal Highness assured that the Kingdom of Bahrain extends its cooperation and develops its coordination in various fields with other friendly countries, whether bilaterally or globally. The Prime Minister noted the ISA Award for Humanitarian Service, considering it an initiative adopted by Bahrain in the humanitarian fields, which confirms its desire to support all efforts to achieve the best interest for humanity. Deputy Premier and President of the Supreme Committee for Information and Communication Technology, the ICT, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, patronized in the presence of the Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister, Zaid bin Rashid Zayani, officials and businessmen, the launch of a host of tourism e services at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. In a statement, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak expressed delight at launching tourism e services, expressing thanks and appreciation to the Industry, Commerce and Tourism Ministry, the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, BTEA, and the officials in charge of the new e-services. He stressed that the new services will boost the tourism sector and develop it, which will help achieve the economic vision for Bahrain of 2030, explaining that the e-services will reduce costs, save time, motivate tourists, and promote the kingdom's tourism and hotel services. He affirmed that developing e-services in the kingdom is no longer an option amid the rapid ICT growth across the world. The Deputy Premier thanked and appreciated the Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister and all who gave the presentations during the ceremony, wishing the tourism sector further success. As Zayani delivered a statement in which he expressed thanks and appreciation to the Deputy Premier for launching tourism e-services. He said that the move affirms the commitment of Industry Ministry, including BTEA, to keep pace with the modern technological developments and turn into an electronic system regarding this services delivered to the kingdom's visitors.
Five electronic programmes, initiated by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, the BTEA, were launched today. They include a new and improved BTEA website and a smartphone app designed to help tourists visiting Bahrain know where to go and what to do. Also, the calendar.bh website was debuted. It lists by date all of the various events going on in the kingdom, whether organised by public or private entities. The centrepiece of the e-services launch today is the Hospitality Electronic System, connecting hotels with the BTEA to provide live statistical data on KPIs such as occupancy rates, average length of stay and demographics like the nationality of visitors. The five integrated electronic programmes launched today have taken considerable time, effort and coordination with entities like Bahrain's e-government authority to develop. For instance, the statistics uh, programme took almost two years to develop. It's not an easy process at all. Uh, but we're glad to have uh, to launch all five together today uh, and again uh, the tourism sector is not just the authority by itself you need to coordinate with all related parties to make sure all info is, uh, is available. The next step is to develop these e-services further to the point where they are all in app form and to continue developing convenient e-services for residents, tourists and businesses that enhance the tourism sector and economy as a whole. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. First, Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, said that the Khalid bin Hamad Theatre Award for national clubs, youth centres and people with disabilities under the slogan, Painting a Smile is to support the youth, which comes in line with the reform project by His Majesty the King. The launch of the award is part of a series of generous initiatives sponsored by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa to support the youth. His Highness said that that Bahrain is being awarded with a certificate as the best Arab country that offers future opportunities for the youth, confirming the care given by His Majesty the King to the youth. His Highness also said that the theatre stage is an important platform to develop the cultural and its arts movements, noting that theatre is an important station to develop the kingdom. He said that he believed in the role of youth in the theatre movement and the idea of launching this award comes within the aim to support youth talents and energies in the theatre field, which is one of the pillars of art. His Highness directed the award to continue for the second year in a row under the slogan Painting a Smile during the month of November. His Highness congratulated Al Hal Al Hala Club for winning the first place in last year's edition and wished all the club success in this edition. His Highness said that the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs, under the leadership of Mr. Hisham bin Mohammed Al Joda, is key partner for the success of the youth, adding that it had a great role in the success of the first edition with wide participation from Bahraini youth that presented distinctive works of art, winning the admiration by those interested in the kingdom's cultural and theatrical affairs. His Highness praised the efforts of the working committee and volunteers that are working hard to make this art gathering into a success. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held a meeting at his majlis in Rafah in the presence of Assistant Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdul Rahman Sadiq Askar, President of the Bahrain Disabled Sports Federation, Sheikh Mohammed bin Daraj Al Khalifa, and several members of the Board of Directors. His Highness Sheikh Khalid holds the opinion that the Kingdom of Bahrain is one of the leading countries in providing care for people with disabilities in various sectors. His Highness stressed that the leadership is providing continuous care to create an appropriate condition for the youth and encourage them to overcome disability by enhancing their abilities and achieve development in sports and disabled. The President of BDF presented a detailed plan on the future programs and schedule of the Federation. The presentation included the Federation's current and past achievements with the different programs and activities organized by it. In addition, the presentation included the Federation's future and its plan to integrate people with military injuries in sports for people with disabilities. This program comes in line with the Federation's direction to be in pace with leading countries that pay great attention to injured people in the military sector. 
His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa praised the efforts of the Federation under the leadership of Sheikh Mohammed bin Raij Al Khalifa that aim to develop this sport through strategies placed by the Federation's President and Board of Directors and also to create the ideal environment for athletes to participate in competitions aboard and bring in more achievements to the Kingdom Bahrain. His Highness said during the discussions gave directives to launch a charity race for all people in the community to join in with people with disabilities abilities and injured military personnel. His Highness also stressed on the importance of discovering new talented people with disabilities in schools to, um, to integrate them in the Federation and build a base for national teams. His Highness praised the suggestions presented by the Federation, stressing on the importance of implementing the action plan submitted by them. His Highness confirmed his support, adding that Bahrain has many youth and talents who will, be, who will advance sports for people with disabilities and raise the name of the kingdom. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa laid the foundation stone for the biggest project in the region, IKEA. Sheikh Khalid stated that the next stage will be marked by big strategic projects reflecting the government's policy of attracting investments and facilitating the investors' direct reception of all their requirements. He explained that the new projects will bring more job opportunities for citizens in various fields and direct contributions and benefits to the gross domestic product. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that along with the marked improvements in granting construction investment license would increase to about 43 percent and the increase of the estimated cost in constructing those projects to about 3.5 million dollars Bahrain has substantial advantage that make it a favored option among investors including its location and its developed infrastructure the deputy prime minister hailed the Ghassan Ahmed al Sleiman furniture group the region's concessionaire for IKEA for making investments in Bahrain reaching up to $125 million, including this project that will be launched in 2018. He also highlighted the importance of this project to the local economy, which reflects the cohesion between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, emanating from the solid historical relations between them. Under the patronage of the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed al Saleh, Project Handara for the re engineering of administrative processes and simplifying health certification procedures to practice business activities under health surveillance was inaugurated. The project offers the simplified operations focused on serving individuals, the proper use of resources, increased flexibility, and the ability to adapt change between and integrating between individuals 
levels, technology and organizational structure. The Minister of Health affirmed His Royal Highness's keenness in the project in order to raise the level of governmental bodies' performances as a confirmation of the coherence between governmental sectors that fall under the cooperation between the Civil Service Bureau and the governmental bodies. The project is in line with the economic vision of 2030 of the Kingdom Bahrain that addresses the challenges facing the health sector. To achieve comprehensive development, the ministry noted that the ministry adopted many projects that require coherence between governmental and private sectors, the merge of public health inspectors and preparation of the comprehensive inspectors will increase the completion of the licensing process for shops by only one visit to the public health department. The security forces are participating in the first GCC Joint Security Exercise Arabian Gulf Security 1 commenced today with the participation of UAE, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Qatar and Kuwait. And as part of their Majesties and Highnesses, GCC leaders focus on stability, peace and the protection of Gulf security. The three weeks exercise is aimed to achieve integration between security forces and reinforce joint counterterrorism capabilities. It also aims to reinforce joint security procedures, enhance readiness of security forces and enhanced field coordination. The beginning of the exercise included a high-quality strategic survey of the area and a study of all the data. The security forces then moved to the field to carry out their operations and implement the deployment security plan in facing sources of threats. It is part of the GCC security agreement. It is expected to promote the capabilities of the forces, especially counterterrorism skills, and allow the forces to exchange expertise. The exercise also also aims to enhance the readiness of security forces, unify security phrases and concepts, and evaluate the leadership and control procedures, communication between security information centers, and implementation of security measures in different security cases.